Many look at companies like Cambridge Analytica and they see a threat to democracy. Now, I'm willing to concede that there may be some potential risks in companies with no regulatory oversight using private personal information to mass identify people's psychological weaknesses in order to manipulate them for the highest bidder. <laughs> but more importantly, data from companies like these could be critical to answering a vital question that's been stalking mankind for millennia. Do vampires exist? <laughs> In the next two minutes, I'll show how not only can we answer this question, but we'll be able to build a database of every vampire in the United States. <laughs> now, fortunately, Cambridge Analytica is just the tip of the iceberg here, so we have a lot of potential suppliers for detailed profiles on everyone in the country. Aside from digital giants like Facebook and Google, there's a huge number of data aggregation companies such as Axiom and Experian. Uh, now, companies like these have thousands of data points on just about everyone in the United States. Now, what these look like are something like this. Now, for those of you without superhuman vision or a pause button, it's essentially everything that's ever been written down or recorded about you and might have any potential relation to your behavior in the future. Now, in case you're worried, companies like this are very worried about privacy, specifically the privacy of whoever is buying data on you. <laughs> They have resisted all attempts at investigation by Congress or the FTC and just laughed them off. So don't worry, we don't have to worry about uh, getting caught by the vampires just because we're digging into this. <laughs> so we start with phone metadata. Phone metadata can be incredibly revealing. Uh, this uh, group found that just with a budget of $20, they were able to reliably identify subjects' religions, health issues, romantic relationships, and use of abortion services. And they were able to tie it to specific people. So, luckily for us, telecom companies will buy and sell this data freely. So it works out beautifully. Now, once we started selecting candidates for these things, we could start narrowing it down based upon the phone metadata. First of all, we do it just based upon the sunrise and sunset times. Now, by focusing specifically on sunrise and sunset times, we can leverage one scourge of humanity against another, daylight savings time. <laughs> you see, vampires' schedules will fluctuate only with the sunrise and sunset times, not with daylight savings times, unlike night shift workers or standard night owls. Now, once we've selected the candidate vampires based upon the phone data, we can look for further indicator traits by purchasing consumer records and cross-analyzing them with the phone number database. Now, the most important uh, single data point here, grocery bills. <laughs> Considering that vampires derive their nutrition from the blood of the innocent, <laughs> we can focus on finding suspiciously small expenditures on food. Next, our verification teams focus on the candidate vampires and look for them based upon, you know, <laughs> yeah. We look at their addresses and places where they're known to uh, interact based upon, of course, the same databases. And then we use thermal cameras to verify whether they are, in fact, vampires. And then, of course, we conduct interviews with the vampires. <laughs> now, this allows us to further verify, fine-tune our model, see if anybody slipped through the cracks, and then we can use machine learning to further identify other vampires. Now, in case we find that ultimately vampires are just a myth, this still has other applications. For example, we might find that there are criminal records which correspond to the lunar cycles, in which case we've found werewolves. Alternatively, lottery winners who are also suspiciously successful investors are definitely time travelers. <laughs> and people who buy things around the world without buying plane tickets to those locations are, of course, wizards. <laughs> now, admittedly, there is the risk of false positives here. We could accidentally persecute people throughout the rest of their lives just because they are lucky or they're, uh, you know, night owls. But like the data brokers, we'll consider them acceptable casualties. <laughs> now, if for some reason that bothers you, then don't worry. Data scientists are consistently finding new ways to or peer deeper into the data based upon just little nuggets here and there. So, 
because we're finding more and more private information just uh, that can be extrapolated based upon larger information sets, we'll get more and more reliable at it. That makes you feel safer, right? <laughs> now, admittedly, this does raise the question, what if we can't entirely trust data brokers with this much power and responsibility because they're controlled by vampires? <laughs> And, in fact, there's some circumstantial evidence to suggest that this is the case. If this is true, then we're totally screwed. Not only do data brokers have more detailed information on us than any totalitarian regime in history, their science to understand and leverage it for manipulation is far more advanced than any previous propagandist. And their customers include nationally elected politicians, government agencies, and most large corporations. So I recommend that either we start demanding more transparency from these companies or we get comfortable being cattle. Thank you.